Hello friends, welcome back to She's in Her Apron. Today, you're gonna come along with me as I plan for the week. So I'm going to be menu planning. I'm going to plan my week with my calendar and my to-do list. I'm also going to be sharing with you how I organize my week with homeschooling. So I'll be sharing the curriculum, how I'm organizing it now, and it's been the best thing. I'm excited to share that with you. And I'm going to be meal planning for the week. I'm also going to be sharing with you a fun tea time I put together with my youngest daughter last week. And I'm going to be sharing with you a very yummy dinner. It's a spaghetti squash bake. So come along with me today. Aprons on. Let's go. Ooh, apron. This is one of my newer aprons. You might have seen it on my latest cleaning video. I actually grabbed this one at Home Goods. I popped in there yeah. to look for teacups for Shaylee and I, and I saw this apron and I love it. Oh, I just hate aprons, so I will say this, that I have to tie like this in the back. I'm not Don't a fan. It's more of a cooking apron for me. Um, if I put an apron on to get things done around the home, I like to have the aprons with the pockets so I can pick up things, throw them in the pockets as I move from room to room and put things back. So a cleaning apron definitely has to have pockets. But this is good for the kitchen, so I'll, I'll wear this for now. All right, we just got back from church a little bit ago. The kids just had lunch, and I am making a hot herbal tea because I am freezing, so. I'm deciding which one I want. All right, so this container has all my herbal teas. And I definitely don't want sleepy time. I got things to do today. I do not want to go to sleep. So, this may be one of these fruit zingers. So I have, this looks like raspberry, black cherry, no. Um, true blueberry, that is interesting. I haven't tried the blueberry yet. Herbal tea, caffeine free, by um, celestial seasonings. And we'll try the blueberry. Interesting. Ooh, that color is so pretty. Washing up some grapes so we can snack on them. Okay, so I'm gonna sit down and plan out my week. I have my homeschool planner. This is Shaylee's academic planner, and during this is the week with all her courses and what we're doing, and I check off if we've done them. But I use the calendar, but I use the calendar here, the monthly calendar in it, to put what we're doing for homeschool, like for field trips and homeschool group things, and then I also put our normal family calendar in here. This is what I look at every day with her lessons. I put what we're doing for each subject, but on the day here, I also have from the main monthly calendar what's going on on this day. So today, this is what I do. I sit down and I put what we got going on in the week here, so when I lesson plan, I know, okay, this is what we can focus on because we have to go here or here, or I need to leave and do this, this, and this, so. Yep, I put all that right here so that's what I'm gonna plan out for this week and then I have my notepad I, I told you guys I, I moved from the planner to this homeschool planner um, to a to-do sheet for the week this one has my pantry freezer meals that's what I'm working on freezer meals straight from my freezer and pantry without um, going and looking I was debating whether or not to post that video because it is all freezer meals that you guys have seen me make a thousand times. It's like my go-to freezer meals. So I have on here shepherd's pie, lasagna, Salisbury steak, chicken enchiladas, Mississippi chicken, pesto ranch chicken, 
taco meat and tater tot casserole. Do you want to see a video of me putting all these together even though you've seen them before? Maybe I could put it in more of a vlog type video just talking and you could see how I'm trying to do it all. Would you like to see that? If not, I was just gonna go ahead and make these and put them in my freezer. So let me know. And I'm wor also working on some make ahead meals as well. I took a break, as you noticed, in January from cooking. I needed a break from like the holidays, jumping back into homeschooling after Christmas and just get grounded again. So I know you guys have missed the cooking videos. I get that, I just needed a break. So now uh, with February coming, you're gonna get cooking again. So that is all coming for you, but I just needed a little break coming. So let me know if you want, maybe in a day in the life type of the timing and how long it really takes and stuff like that, let me know. All right, so I'm gonna put on here um, more of my to-do list with zone cleaning and any errands that I have to run on here. That's what I do. And then I just put it on my refrigerator so I can see it, so. All right, so I'm gonna get planning and have my snack. So today I've got grapes and strawberries and muffins. Um, all of this came from a Sam's Club Costco haul, which you guys will see um, later this week. I have a big Sam's Club and Costco haul for you guys. It's the first big haul from like November. I said I was gonna wait till February, but uh, this weekend I needed to go. I needed to get some things, so I'll be sharing that with you. So all my to-dos for this week is to go back to Costco on Wednesday. I was able to get half of it done because when I went, I didn't realize that the sales on laundry detergents and um, other cleaning things that I needed don't start till Wednesday. So Wednesday, I am making a trip back to Costco. I was hoping that all my shopping for the next two weeks would be done, but nope. So I gotta head back on Wednesday, so. All right, come plan with me. Well, this is more than just a snack for me. I haven't had breakfast and I haven't had lunch, so. And it is almost 1230 right now. And this is really good, you guys, the blueberry um, Zinger tea from Celestial Seasonings is delicious. And I'll be sharing with you in just a little bit in this video how I uh, organize homeschooling with my new system. I'll share that with you in this video instead of making it a dedicated video. So first, I'm gonna look at my calendar. Can you believe that January has come and gone? Today's the last day of January. Holy moly. Wow, so I gotta look into February. Holy moly. Okay, so we have a field trip tomorrow. I think that's still happening. I'm just gonna check with our homeschool group. We were supposed to go to the humanitarian center, but I guess they're not starting their tours back up yet. We're gonna try to get together, but we'll see. If it doesn't pan out, that's okay. So I will put, uh, I'll put field trip FT question mark for tomorrow. So I just, make our lessons according to that. Even though I know we have tutoring at the same times every week, I still put them in here because I could get really forgetful and flighty when I'm just go, 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 and I, and I have a lot on my brain and I, I feel overwhelmed. I ha I'm a visual person, so I still have to put things that I know all the time because there have been days where I have had a complete brain fart. And I'm like, how did that happen that I know this, but you know, sometimes life just gets crazy and I get brain fog. Boston, you have young men's activity this week? Yeah, Thursday. Thursday? Do you know what time? Oh, Paige, I just saw my text from the vet. That's right, because Paige went to the vet this past week to get updated on her shots and now she has to go for her well check. Okay, so the first, which is tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. If there is a field trip, we're usually always done before um, 3.30, so that will work out just fine. Let me double check here on my calendar. Oh, Paige. Okay, Paige has also her hair appointment. Thank goodness I looked again. All right, so Paige does have a salon appointment on the third, which is Wednesday, so 10 a.m. Okay, so that works out really good because Boston has tutoring in the morning and then I could just scoot over and drop Paige off and then I can run into Costco. I'm gonna put that here. I have time to drop Paige off, head to Costco, pick up my uh, cleaning things and then go pick Boston back up from tutoring. 
So that's what will happen on Wednesday. And then homeschool has favorite book. When we get together, they share their favorite book. So we have that going on on Friday. That is my week, you guys. So now I just need to do a to-do list. And I do this with my uh, chores, zone cleaning. Okay guys, um, I wanna share with you something. You can go to theflylady.net and you can look up the zones if you're doing zone cleaning or in interested. This week we're in zone one, starting tomorrow the first, or today the first as you're watching this, for the rest of the week. The entrance, dining room, and front porch. I took out dining room years ago from zone one. I don't have a separate dining room. I think that's why she made it that way. I think she made it separate because most homes where she's from, she's from North Carolina, most homes on the East Coast have a separate dining room as its own room. So in there you have your dining room table, your hutch, maybe your buffet station and things like that. And so I can see why that's in there. But the original, um, the original she's in her apron home in with my kitchen, but that was it. So I just took dining room out and um, just made the whole kitchen area with the table the kitchen area. And I did the same thing when we were in our rental last year. But now in this home, we'll be here for a few years. Uh, I think I'm gonna, uh, and because of how um, small the area, well, it's not, it's, this. how big is this bait apartment, Derek? I can't remember if your dad said 2,000 or 2,100 square feet. One of those. Um, but we have a very small entryway and we don't have um, our front porch is under the deck and there's we keep that pretty clean everything under there is basically the grills the trash cans and the um, patio furniture so we could just make sure that bikes and scooters are put away in the garage swept up things like that I do wash the windows and things like that I think I am gonna add dining room back into zone one I think I'm gonna add it in because there's so much detail cleaning when it comes to the kitchen I always try to scrub the fridges. I have two refrigerators uh, go through the freezers. I added my pantry on in with the kitchen and then my food storage room. And there's a lot of detailed cleaning in those areas and a lot of things I could do to organize and keep it um, tidy, right? So maybe I will add the dining room on. That way the dining room table every month gets a good scrub down. And I hate when it doesn't get a good scrub down. And by a good scrub down, I'm talking like detailed cleaning like cleaning the arms and the legs and every inch of the chairs and around the the, the curves of the table and, and underneath and and the legs so I think I am gonna add the dining room in and that way the dining room table gets a good clean and the buffet table so now I'm going to make my list for the week for zone cleaning like I said um, in previous videos I like to just pick one day get an hour in and get it done um, I'm trying to look at my schedule for the week and I think the only day that I could do that with my schedule is either Friday or Tuesday. I'm really going to try to make it Tuesday um, but there are things that I have got scheduled to film so we'll see how it goes. So I can either do 15 minutes a day in my zone like the fly lady teaches or I like to pick four things, one hour, crank it out. So. I'll keep you posted and of course I'm gonna film zone one. You've seen zone four, which is the master bedroom. I'll have these videos down below for you. you and you've seen zone five this last week with the family room. And then I will film for you zone, oh, but I want you to see that for this week to get you motivated. So maybe I will film Tuesday, the zone cleaning, and I could get it up for you. Oh my gosh, you guys, I only like to post twice a week, but you might get a bonus video this week. <laughs> All right, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to make the detailed list now. All right, I like this notebook. I, I, it's a Kiki K. I think I grabbed it from Michael's one year. For my notes here, I'm going to put where I need to be. Wednesday. I'm not putting in tutoring because we all know that. I'm just putting the appointments in. What I was saying with the uh, Fly Lady website, you can go on and you can get a detailed cleaning list of things that you could pick for your zone. Also, she does have an app, Fly Lady Plus. It's an app. Um, 
and it goes through all your routines all your routines so like I just opened it and this is for Sunday January 31st um, they have what she calls a morning musing she just asks if you've done your weekly home blessing for the week because you could split that up during the days if you want she always has a daily mission and a habit for the month so the habit to get people going on is shining your sink which is always having a clean sink uh, nothing in it. So your daily mission for tomorrow is, which is today for you, your daily mission today is to shake off your doormats and sweep off your front porch. Uh, Tuesday's daily mission is, and this can count as your 15 minutes if you aren't decluttering. If you are starting from the beginning and you have tons of clutter to go through, you're working 15 minutes in those clutter spots. If not, these little daily missions are the things that you can do if you choose to pick them. So like Tuesday's daily mission is, we're going to have a multi-room mission today. It might take you longer than 15 minutes to do it. So set your timer, your front porch, entrance, and dining room. Put the fires that are burning in your hot spots. So find your hot spots. Where's your clutter? Is it on a counter? Is it in a drawer? And then Wednesday, she doesn't have one because I, I'm, I, I know she's got certain days set to certain things. So Thursday, your daily mission is if you have any leftover holiday decorations. I know a lot of people do keep their holiday decorations up through January. And then Friday's daily missions, if you choose to, is to wipe down the tops and edges and legs of your dining room table, chairs, things like that. And yes, I'll definitely be picking that one. So, and then you can, with that app, you can actually, like, there. This isn't sponsored, you guys. I, I just know you guys have asked before if she has an app. You can go down here to this button where it says routines. And then, um, and then here she has your routines. So you have your morning routine, your afternoon routine, your after dinner routine, and your weekly home blessing. So your morning routine, if you click on it, you can, it's like a checkbox and you can check off what you have done for the morning. And then she has upcoming zones over here. So zone one. So I'm gonna choose the ones that I want to do. So my list is made and so that's the zone cleaning and I could get that done. This, it might take a little more than an hour with the dining room table, but maybe not. I mean, everything else is really easy. So this whole thing could take me an hour. Sometimes it's longer with filming but that's okay okay so then for my weekly home blessing uh bed sheets and blankets some people's blankets didn't get done the last time so that they can get washed and everything else gets done in everyone's zones vacuuming and all that and garbages house garbages can be done um i'm just going to write down what i want to do for youtube sometimes things get mixed up i have plans for you guys things i want to film but Family always comes first, so. All right, I am done, my list is made. So I mentioned a couple of times that I had a tea party with Shaylee. I learned this from another homeschool mom, I think here on YouTube, and then I jumped on Pinterest and found some things. So what it is, it's like a reading tea time. You sit and you read together. So you can have a theme for your tea party if you want. So I kind of did a va an early Valentine's Day theme with Shaylee. So let me share with you what I did. It was so cute. It was so cute and so much fun. Uh, I am planning on another tea party. We want to do another one this week. With the look of my schedule, I'm, we might be able to do it on Friday. Um, even with our, our homeschool group. So we'll see, but I won't go to the extreme that I did. But let me share with you this fun idea to do once in a while with your kids. And we just, it was so cute. With some leftover bananas, I decided to make some banana bread. This tray I found at Home Goods. And for our tea time today, we're actually having some Stevens hot chocolate. I found these strawberry marshmallow hearts, some watermelon rings, some cotton candy to use as a filler, and some heart-shaped gummies.
I set out our books, and it was time to serve up. I made some chili meatballs, some egg salad sandwiches, banana bread, and of course the hot chocolate. It was so much fun. It was so sweet. We really enjoyed our time. Okay, so here is the homework station that I've shared with you guys before. Um, and I would have all her main subjects here. And then I would take what we were learning, bring it to the table, um, with in some of it in this bucket here. Uh, but I noticed that we kept going back and forth, back and forth, over here, grabbing things and going back to the table. So let me share with you the new system that I've got going on. So here's what I got going on. I grabbed this um, tray, rolling tray system from Michael's three weeks ago, maybe. So let me share with you how we use this and how I keep organized. So all I do is roll this over to the table and there's no more getting and going back and forth unless um, we pull out one of the manipulables or games that we have for learning. That's the only time we get up. So this has helped us so much. I'm gonna have to get on my knees for this. Okay, so this has been so good. I'm so glad that I changed the system up to this. I've seen this cart system a lot with homeschool moms. Um, I watch a lot of homeschooling videos and I have for years, cause I loved how they, did their day in the lives, how they added it in, their routines, their structure. So before I even became a homeschooling mom, for years, you guys, I've been following homeschool moms to watch. <laughs> um, so I've learned quite a bit, and this stand was one of the things that I learned. So I have each drawer labeled for each subject. Now, does this mean we do this many subjects in a day? No. There's some days where she's like, can we keep going? And I say, yup. <laughs> and she'll be like, I wanna do some science, okay? She always does history. The girl loves history. So let me share with you which each door is um, and what subjects we're doing and I'll share with you the curriculum. A lot of you asked about this. I'll make this kind of quick and share with you how I'm organizing it. So the first bucket is Come Follow Me. This is for church. I print out, I found this really cool lady who does monthly um, Doctrine and Covenant things. So I gotta go print out January um, for Come Follow Me for Church. So just mini lessons and little things for her to do. She has in here, in here she has the Book of Mormon for young readers and it's phenomenal. It's so good. We used to do this for family home evening. If we needed a quick lesson, we would jump in and read a chapter and it explains things for the kids. It highlights the hard words and explains to them what the words are something fun to memorize, something to think about. And then- They have those for the New Testament and stuff too, right? No, I looked her up, she has it. I really wish this author would do other things like the Bible, but not yet. And then she has the Book of Mormon for Young Readers journal, and it, she can write any thoughts and feelings that pop into her head when, um, when she's learning about it and hearing about it. So that is in there, so that helps with her writing and comprehension. So we start off our day with that. Doesn't take long at all. And then the first drawer, I have math one and math two. Math one is, so I have a whiteboard in here. Um, math one is the, the, the main math that we have to do. Her math from the Good and the Beautiful book. And then I have the sec, she's almost done with this one and we're about to hit um, book two for the year for this. So her main math is in here and it comes with her math journal. Um, so her main math is here. Math two is when she does that and we want more practice in certain areas or if it's a day that I can't sit and teach with her and she's upstairs doing homeschool while I'm on an errand or have a meeting or working, things like that. She's upstairs doing homeschool and all this stuff is in her binder. I'll share the binder in just a minute. So I found 100 days of time tests. These are awesome, you can time your kids. If you don't wanna time your kids, just have them sit and do times tables. So they go from easier to harder, it's phenomenal. So I'll grab one from each, you know, harder to easier for her. So she could do that, that's an option for things she could do. Found this at Costco, it's the Jumbo Mass Math Success Workbook by Sylvan Learning. You guys, this is really, really good. She is enjoying it. Um, it's This is fourth grade, that's the grade that she's in. So it's really helping her 
strengthen the things that she's learning in her math book. So I'll be like, okay, here's another supplement to what we were learning. And um, so I, I'll rip a page off from here and put it in her folder. Again, I'll share that folder in just a minute. And then you guys, if your, ch if your children are struggling, even your older children with times tables, especially after after the fives from six up, this program is phenomenal. It's called Times Tales Storybook. There's a DVD that goes with this. And it creates a way for you to remember your times table. So just for an example, I'll give you this. The sixth grade class looks like this. Look at their heads, they look like sixes. Chairs are, this chair looks like a four. So this represents the number six, the chair represents the number four. So the sixth grade class played musical chairs for 24 hours. Sixth grade class played musical chairs for 24 hours. Six times four is 24. And the way that they have the program set up on the DVD, it really, they catch onto it so quick. So when we're doing math, in, oh, so for eight times four, that's kind of a hard one for kids. So eight times four is Mrs. Snowman, climbs on a chair, no, yeah, climbs on a chair, so eight and four, and reaches her three buttons and two mittens. And she knows this, like she knows this by heart. This has been, and now with her multiplication, you guys, like this, and it only took a few days. And she, now she has no problem with her higher times tables. It is fantastic. I, I heard a lot about it on the internet from people. And then it came with this pet math book. So it comes with like, this is so cute with flyers like Sadie's pet grooming, Vicky's vet clinic and Barky's pet supply. And it's like a menu, everything, what everything costs. <laughs> and, and then it has in here things for her to do to match, um, to match those brochures like this one here that she did the other day, she had to fill out these ticket receipts. So she had to go look at the menu, fill it out, learn how to add the money. And then if each person bought this receipt with these dollar bills, what would the change be? It's been great. It's been another great tool for math for them. And it also came with, I'll leave a link to where I found this for you guys, a, a drive through menu option. So it comes with, this fun drive through menu. So when the kids are at the drive through maybe this will help them add things up and things like that so they have fun activities to go with that. She's loving it. All right, so that's math two. These are all the extra things that we're learning to go with math one. This drawer here is, so ang language arts, that's what LA is, language arts, and then phonics. So she the, here's her book from the good and the beautiful. Um, so right now, like tomorrow, she'll learn more about adjectives and get stronger in that area. And then I grabbed from Spectrum, I ordered this off of Amazon. This is Word Study and Phonics. So also grade four, and it just is another supplement to go with um, her phonics that she's learning here. I have to tell you that she was doing good with this, but once I started adding this workbook in, things are getting stronger for her. So she does a, one of these worksheets every day. I'm telling you, I'm so glad I added this in because it's making this stronger. She is catching on to how things are supposed to be said, how they sound. It's been great. This drawer here is spelling and reading. In, the, in literacy arts, they do have some spelling words. They're really small. Um, but I, I just wasn't keen on it and she wasn't catching on. So I grabbed this, building spelling skills for her. I, I went a grade below to help her catch up and it's been really working. This is more her speed. So it comes with a list. How many weeks is there? I think there's 30, yeah, 30 weeks. Each day she has a spelling activity. So the first day, like tomorrow, she'll get a new list and then she can write it out. She could fold the paper and try to write it without seeing the words. And then on Tuesdays, they have a, a visual memory to help them, so they do a worksheet. But every day I have her write her spelling words out. She'll do them once, she'll just make a row, just look at them, spell them out, say them. 
And then each day there's a worksheet. So this is Tuesday's worksheet. And then, so Tuesdays are visual memory. Wednesdays are word meaning. Let's see, Thursdays are word study. And then Friday's the test. And this, you guys, she has been getting, like her first test she did, she got 100. And the next two or three, she got only one wrong. This has helped her so much. And then I got her grade four reading skills. We don't do this every day. This is just a supplement to add in, especially the days where she could do work on her own. Right now she's learning about facts and reading the story and finding the facts with the questions that they're asking. So she's learning to go back in the story and to look for those things. And it's helping also with reading comprehension. And then later in the book it'll go over other skills so she doesn't do this every day she probably does this twice a week and then there is writing in handwriting drawer so she has her two handwriting books um, one is cursive one is normal penmanship and then i have another cursive book that doesn't fit in here that she'll work from and then there's these two books here um, once a week we'll do something from the daily six trait writing like for this section that we did she learned about the main ideas of, of a story or a news article, something like that. She learned choosing a strong idea. Um, this week we learned about topic sentences and the details that support that topic sentence in a paragraph. So we, we did one of these last week. She burnt her finger and so it was hurting her. She cooked um, lunch. And so she burnt her fingers, so she had a hard time holding onto her pencil that day. So I wrote in her answers for her. So we got that. And then we, we haven't started this yet, uh, but it's how to write a story, grades one through three. Just simple ways of learning how to pick a topic, organizing the actions for it, and, and conclusions. So um, maybe we'll start this this week, but I got this as another just supplement. All right, so that is... Um, writing and handwriting and then history her history i switched it up from the good and the beautiful and grabbed her the heritage studies three because you could do it in a semester the the third one or you could spread it out for the year but we're going to finish out the semester with this this is through um this is through bju press it was spendy but she's loving it she really is and i'm going to be grabbing their uh, heritage studies for um, in the summer when she's done with this and we'll start on that for the school year. And then there's science. We do have science courses through the Good and the Beautiful. We have a water study. We have um, kingdoms and clarifications through them. And then we, but the days that we can't sit and do the experiments and things like that, I grab this daily science from Evan Moore. So you could just for one day, they have a topic for the day. You learn about it, some vocab words, and she's enjoying this. We just did, we just finished a section on beavers and she really enjoyed learning about how beavers build their dams, how it works, and she really enjoyed that. So it's just a daily thing that she could do. We don't do it every day. We probably do science twice a week, um, one from in here and one from the good and the beautiful. She really likes the water one with the water experiments through the good and the beautiful. This bucket here is geography. We do geography like once a week. This is also from Evan Moore, the daily geography practice. And um, right now she's learning about maps. So this is grade three. I also grabbed uh, four, uh, I also grabbed grade four. It goes into more detail and in depth. I just go with off her mood and how she is doing and we'll do one um, from each. And then this is the skill sharpened. This one's fun. It's more in color, goes more into depth, and kind of brings what they're learning to life. So we do geography once a week. And again, she it depends on her mood. There was um, a time all last week she was like into geography. History's always, I mean, she'll pick history all the time. And then the last drawer is just the books that we're reading right now. So this, The Black Pony, is from The Good and the Beautiful. Her bookshelf in her room is filled with books. She got a ton of books for Christmas and her birthday. We're reading All in the Seasons as well right now from The Good and the Beautiful. 
and we're finishing up the schoolhouse blizzard. I might actually pull this out again for our tea time. And she's working on a chapter book right now, which is Peter Pan. She just finished Treasure Island and absolutely loved it. And her reward for finishing that big chapter book was going to have lunch with dad. And now the next uh, goal for her next book is I think they're gonna go bowling or laser tagging, something like that. So that book is always with her. She is enjoying reading and it's been awesome. Um, I have to say though, with starting to homeschool, her confidence level has shot through the roof. Her reading has improved a ton. I've been testing her um, reading fluency and it has skyrocketed. Um, it's improved her spelling. Just having that one-on-one -on -one time that she couldn't get at school like, is making a world, a world of difference. All right, let me jump into this bucket thing I got going on right here. Okay, so here I found this little cute white system at Walmart. I didn't know if I was gonna use it or not and I was you know, ready to bring it back to the store but it's working out pretty dang good. So in here I have all our pencils and pens dry erase markers and markers right here to have on hand so we don't have to keep running into the laundry room to the homework station. The word that she doesn't know, um, we write the word on the index card and I put it in her um, language arts drawer and then she reads so daily. I'll go through these words and she'll, she'll say them and so that way she, it's kind of like a sight word thing. So we do that. I have extra paper for when I made Callie's cookbook that we use um, for her spelling and different things. We have crayons in here and a calculator if we need it. So here's her history binder. This has all the stuff that BJU Press sent out, extra work, tests, worksheets. So I have it right here. This is her math box with all her math activities from The Good and the Beautiful. Um, you guys, even if you don't homeschool, may I suggest that you go check out The Good and the Beautiful and order their activity box for your kids. This is for grades three and four. So if you want something fun to do with your kids to help strengthen like their multiplication and their division, this box is it. It comes with a ton of um, manipulables to do these things with. It comes with a workbook to explain to you how to use these mats. I'm gonna show that to you in just a second. Directions on how to play the games and how to use the mats. And there is a ton, a ton. Okay, so you won't know how to do them if you just looked at the cards. You'd be like, what, the what? So this one is division. I'm not sure what this is. This, has got, this could be division or multiplication. But there are so many of these front and back activities to help strengthen their multiplication and their division and how to play them are on here. It makes a huge difference. So if you want something to do with the, your kids, even if they go to outside, go to school, um, I think your kids would enjoy this and it would help so much. Yeah, this is fun. If someone had told me that, I would have done that if I had known about that. All right, let me share with you. I think you've seen this in one of my weekly planning videos. Let me share with you in detail how I, I use this. So I use this every day. This is part of our everyday learning and the days that I am not working with her. If she's working with somebody else or on her own. So here she has a packet that has um, pencils and erasers in here. So the first section, it's all her subjects. Again, we don't do these every day but the sheets that she works on for Come Follow Me, I'll put in here. And then when we're all done with school, the next, I will sit and fill up all these pockets for the next day. And of course, I don't need to keep getting up and moving because my cart is right next to me so I could take the workbooks out, rip the pages and put them in here. So I never am getting up. It goes super fast at the end of the day. Or if we're done with the subject right then and there, I'll rip something out and put it in the pocket so, um, so I have Come Follow Me, Math, and that counts for Math 1 and Math 2, her phonics, spelling and reading skills. I have handwriting, and then in handwriting, I underlined writing, because it covers her writing work as well. And then science, geography, and history. Even though she has a main history binder, it's holding 
all the worksheets and things that BJU Press gave us, but there is study sheets they give for the week or for the, the chapter that you're on, and I'll keep it in here, but we just, we just finished a chapter and just did the test so her um, folders emptied. With any of these subjects, she'll do a page, okay? Whatever she has finished, she'll turn it over. This is a double-sided pocket, um, a double-sided pocket folder thing. So anything that she's finished, she puts on the back side. So when I come back to check, I just look for all the work that she had finish, finished on the back side. So that's how I do that. It's been super helpful that way. And then I'll look and I don't technically need to grade her papers at all. Our state doesn't need you to track anything, but I do um, just for progress sake. So yeah, that's what she does. On Wednesday morning, when I have that busy schedule, as you saw, she will just get ready for the day and take this. She could work, like I said, on her own or go upstairs and work with Oma and Opa. They're always so glad to help. Um, they offered so sweet. So she'll sit up there and work, and then if she needs help, she'll ask for their help. So this has been fantastic. So. She could just take this and go, it's all set for her. And then as you know, this book here, as you guys saw, what I do is I will sit down. So on Fridays, when I'm done doing school with her, I come and I sit down and I plan next week's um, lessons. And if they work with our schedule, I always do this in pencil because things always change. So like tomorrow, we might go on the field trip, we might not. If we don't, I'll just go along with all that I have planned here. There might be stuff added more in. Okay, so we don't have to keep track of what they're doing here in Utah, but I do. I wanna see how long it'll take to get through her main course books. Um, are we spending too much in one area? We need to, we're not doing much in this one area. Let's go back and work over there. So I divided these boxes to have two subjects in each box. And that's been super helpful. Like I said, she doesn't have to do every subject um, during the week, but her main subjects that she has to do during the week are her literature, her literacy arts, her phonics, her math and her spelling. This section is the main thing that she has to do every day. And then all of this is subject to mood, desire, all of that. So I even have a section in here for electives. She has a music elective. She has a typing elective and a drawing elective and PE. So that is how I'm keeping track of homeschooling and it is working beautifully. This cart and the binder has been Awesome. So now if we do anything that's secondary or want to do more of a game, I have all that stuff on the counter in there and underneath the cupboards. If you want to see what's in those cupboards, um, check out my first homeschooling organizing video. Um, I'll link it or up on the eye in the sky for you. So then we'll just go in there. But honestly, we're not getting up very much and I am so thankful. So this has been easy and I just, when we're done, we just roll it back to its spot there. I'm not stressed with homeschool. The only thing about homeschool that I stress about is just finding the time and routine with YouTube and, and homeschool. That's the, <laughs> that's the only thing. Just trying to create a schedule to make all that work because obviously homeschool comes first. So I know I, I told Derek, I'm like, ooh, doggy. I had it pretty easy with all the kids gone at school. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and trying to figure out filming. So. My, I tip my hat to all you homeschool moms juggling everything else that you do and working with your job. So it's a lot. If you have any suggestions for me, please leave them down below. That's how I've been doing homeschool for the last, gosh, three, four weeks, and I'm loving it. So this past week, our pig came. I don't know if you guys remember. I have mentioned on the vlogs, but I also shared it on Instagram that our family raised three pigs. Uh, my brother-in-law did at his house at, on his property. So they went through the butcher starting in December. So our pigs came and um, let me share with you what it looks like. So we had to make room in our freezers for all that pork as well. So let me share with you that. I couldn't for say for sure exactly the poundage of what we got, but we did get 
pork sausage, hot Italian sausage, pork roasts, pork loins, ham steaks, pork chops, bacon. We're really excited. All right, so that was fun. So now we have pork. Uh, all right, let's do some meal planning for the week. I just moved my appointments up here and then my priorities for the week up here. So I have make ahead meals, shop for Shaylee, and visit teach or it's called ministering um, through our church. Women that we help in our church that my mother-in-law and I are partners and then we help. Uh, so here I'm going to do some meal planning. So I'm, I don't assign a day for meals. I just write the meals and then we could see what works with our schedule best when to have them. So I have pork chops. I have some half and half to use up. If it's still good, we will have some clam chowder. Uh, I also have some pie shells that I bought. Uh, I wanna do some tuna pot pie. All these recipes are down below. Uh, I also wanna do some sweet and sour meatballs and chicken fajitas. Uh, and then I will be making some, I'll put in between here, um, I bought a rotisserie chicken. You're gonna see this haul in an upcoming video, um, but I wanna make some chicken salad for lunches during the week. So I have grapes that I just bought, and we have the rotisserie chicken, yum yum. So um, chicken salad for lunches, pork chops, clam chowder, tuna pot pie, sweet and sour meatballs, and chicken fajitas. All right, friends, I am working on dinner, and I have a spaghetti squash here. What I did was cut it in half, got all the seeds out, and then I drizzled it with some olive oil and some salt and pepper. And I washed the outside of it before I cut it. So now I've got some parchment paper down on my baking sheet. They're gonna bake upside down um, at a 400 degree oven for about 40, 45 minutes and then I'll check on them and go from there. Next, I'm going to cook up some hot Jimmy Dean pork sausage and then drain the fat and then pour in a bottle of Bertoli tomato and basil sauce and get those working together. I'm gonna check my refrigerator and see if I have any zucchini or mushrooms or anything that I can use up in this as well, but I think I used all my zucchini, so. But if you've got any vegetables, peppers, um, squashes that you want to use also like zucchini or yellow squash to add to this do it it's such a great filler so i had in my refrigerator some leftover regular sausage um, that we cooked up for breakfast the other day so i decided to throw it in here to make it more meatier in a way and so we've got regular pork sausage and hot italian and i'll get that all cooked through and then we'll add our sauce. And that is all done. Now I'm gonna add my sauce to this. Okay, I'm gonna add two cans, two jars of that sauce. I think I'm gonna keep this simple. I usually would add peppers and onions, but tonight we're just gonna do the sausage in the sauce and keep it simple. I'm gonna just have that heat through. And I'm gonna check on my squash because it's been about 45 minutes. Woo! They're hot. Look at that. That looks good. I'm just gonna um, let this bubble away, just simmer, and get all that flavor of the sausage in with the sauce. And then we will pour it in to our spaghetti squash and top it with a ton of cheese. Oh, it's gonna be so good. It's different every time I make it, because last time I put leftover zucchini and onions and peppers and all that stuff, and I only had, um, I did half hot sausage and half ground beef. So every time I make it, it's different. It's a definitely fun meal to play with and change up constantly. Selfie! All right, I'm going to grate on top some Pecorino Romano and put some mozzarella cheese and then we'll get it in the oven and let it get all melty and cook through. We have extra sauce here to add on top once we cut and slice down. Oh, this is gonna be so good. I'm gonna hit it with some Italian seasoning. Okay, I'm 
gonna get this in the oven and let it cook until it's all melted. Oh my gosh. Can you just look at that? Oh, it's so good. Derek just sliced him down and we just pick one up, put them on our plate. Mmm, yummy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Any tips on anything I shared with you, please leave down below. I would love to know what you have planned for the week and what is on your menu. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me and we will see you soon. Bye. Toodles. Toodles.